God is good, you know, that uh, there are things happening in the world that's not announced in the news at all. For example, the CEO from Pfizer is actually charged with breaking the law. Did you know that? Because they gave that vaccination thing. More details are on that, and they're going to go to court for that thing. They have the evidence, amen, to actually bring it to the truth, you know? So, so we're going to pray that justice will be done, and perhaps that will be the very key that's going to open the, all the all the boundaries that have been bound, but then it may cause a chain reaction of other justice systems to activate to bring justice to everything. So, praise God. So, let's keep that in prayer that there will be no interference from the enemy. Amen. Amen. Anyway, praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. What an awesome day. You know, we're talking about giving ourselves to God. One of the most amazing things is to have faith in a living God. In other words, our faith is not based on our faith, but His faith. If you realize that the kind of faith that God has when he created the heavens and the earth, he spoke it into existence, something that did not even exist. He said, let there be light, and there was light. And, you know, made the oceans, the air that we breathe, the stars and the sky, and the sun and the moon, everything. Amen? Amen. When we place our faith upon the faith that is in God, we're talking about supernatural ability of God, that God is able to do the impossible. For all things are possible with God. In a generation that we're living in, and as the people who are caught in circumstances, sickness, diseases, uh, bound by sins and corruption, bound by addictions and so forth in many different forms. Many times when man is enslaved to these things, they have a hard time believing that anybody can set them free, especially when they have tried all the efforts of the medical science to try to deliver them and set them free. But then when we come to God, we're going into a, a dimension of faith that God can recreate or give a brand new start and a brand new life and, and bring some, some powerful manifestation into existence. That things that are impossible with man 
to think about. That means what is impossible with us today is possible with God. Amen. But too many times with too much focus on ourselves, we limit ourselves by looking at ourselves because we think that what I have to do instead of what God wants to do. Amen. So all things are possible with God. Hallelujah. It is here where we place our trust and faith in a living God. We come boldly to the throne of grace and ask God to give us grace even this hour. John chapter 1 verse 3 says, All things were made by Him. So when you're putting faith in God, God says all things were made by Him. He says without Him was not anything that was made. So everything we see that is made, He is the one that created it. He is the one that made it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In John chapter 1 and 10, He was in the world. Hallelujah. And the world was made by him. Can you imagine the one that created the heavens and the earth was now walking on the face of the earth? Amen. Amen. And all things were made by him. Hallelujah. And yet the world did not know him. It's just like today, you know, God has released His Holy Spirit and that Holy Spirit has come into the hearts of His children. Amen. And yet, can you stop to realize the one inside you has made all things? Can you focus your faith in the one that's inside you that can change every situation in your life that was impossible with you? that is now made possible through the grace of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Isn't that incredible to think about that? Amen. When you look at Ephesians 2, 4, say God was rich in mercy. I want you to understand that the God we serve is rich in the abundance of mercy. In his mercy, he's reaching out for your soul. In his mercy, he's ready to make intervention on your behalf, which is already set in motion 2,000 years ago. He wants you to place your faith in the living God and stop looking at the circumstances, stop looking at what the government is doing, Stop looking at what's happening all around us and let us focus on the one that can make all things new. Amen. Amen. Because he is going to make all things new. Hallelujah. And it's going to happen with all those who turn to him and open their heart to him, who will humble themselves and acknowledge to him that the things that is impossible with us to try to change our lives, to change our ways, to change us from all the situation we're facing that we will just humble to him and say, God, I surrender, put my total faith and trust in you that you're going to open the heavens and make a way for all of us. Not just me, not just you, but even those who are listening on, on YouTube this day. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Know this. God is rich in mercy. And how does he have this richness of this mercy? He says, for his great love. Oh my God. We're talking about a love not like the world loves. We're talking about the way God loves. Amen. The kind of love that forgives. The kind of love 
that will deliver, heal, and set the captives free. We're talking about a love that will take a guilty person and will forgive them and heal them and set them free and then give them a new start in life and not condemn them, but rather save them. Hallelujah. That's incredible to think about that. He says, for his great love wherewith he has loved us. In other words, you've got to understand that God is extending his love towards you. This is what he wants to show you mercy with. That love that he shows mercy for you, the love he has for you, is not to keep you in bondage, not to keep you in, in, in being prisoner to your sins. It's that the love that has the power to set you free from, from all your addictions and sickness and diseases. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2, 7 clearly declares that, that in the ages to come. Now, the ages to come has been taking place for the last 2,000 years. I want you to understand that this mercy and this richness of his love has been activated already 2,000 years ago. Amen. In the ages to come and the ages to come and the ages that are going to come hereafter. In other words, his, his grace is never going to stop. Amen. Amen. That he might show, that he might reveal, he needs to open the eyes of his children. He needs to open the body of Christ and wake them up out of their sleep and let them wake up to the reality to know that God is alive. That he might show, that he might reveal the exceeding riches the richness of His grace. It's the richness of that grace is much more greater and much more powerful, much more incredible than we can ever imagine or even think. To understand the kindness and the love that He has towards us, that everything that came to Jesus Christ, to every man, woman, and child, Hallelujah. Glory to God. All the time. We can get upset because of the conditions of the world. We can be upset at the conditions and how people are living. We can get upset at the behavior of the, of the corruption that is even in the, in, in the government positions. But that ain't going to change anything, getting upset and mad about it and trying to go there and trying to tell everybody to stop their evil wickedness because that is not going to stop it. Amen. The only thing that's going to stop this evilness and wickedness that we have in this land is for people to realize as God begins to pour out his mercy upon our nation and begins to intervene on the behalf of, of Canada and the United States and other most parts of the world. See, the world needs grace and mercy and the very love that comes from God that has the power to heal and deliver and set the captives free. Hallelujah. That God can make all things new. Amen. Amen. It sets you free from the burdens, from the discouragement, from the hopelessness into the confidence and the faith that is in Christ that comes to the grace of God, the exceeding riches of His grace. His kindness is His love that only comes through Jesus Christ. Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Amen. So when we stop to examine and look at the scripture in Ephesians 2, 8, it says, For by grace are you saved. In other words, the grace of God, which is the kindness of God, which is the mercy of God, which is the love that comes from Jesus Christ, that has the ability and the power to be able to save you and to heal you and to give you a birth.
birth of a new life within you as a result of when you put your faith in God that he has the ability to, to give birth to a new life within you. In other words, if you're willing to humble, if you're willing to come to him, if you're willing to say, here I am, God, take me just the way on with my failures and my shortcomings and my weaknesses and all my frailness, O oh God, and by the very mercy of your grace, hallelujah, hallelujah, come and save me. We have to understand the grace that has the power to do something that no one else can do when we put our faith in it. He says, by grace are you saved through faith. Because without faith, faith in the living God, faith in the sacrifice of Jesus, the faith in the offering of his body and his blood that has the ability, the power to heal you and set you free. Hallelujah. That very grace that opens the door to the very life that Christ has inside of him wants to come to dwell inside of you. Hallelujah. That has got the ability by the grace of God to give you a new mind, a new heart, a new life that comes to the faith of Jesus Christ. And then so clear he said that, and not of yourselves. Oh, what a relief it is to know that we don't have to wrestle no more in trying to get there on our own. It's so wonderful to know that we, have, we can lay down the struggles and humbling our struggles and the controls and how we're trying to discipline ourselves to try to come into this life with Christ, thinking that we have to do something in our flesh to get there. When actually it's in none of yourselves. So when you realize it has nothing to do with what you do, then your eyes will be open to the grace of God. Then you will see where the power is at. It's not in, in your flesh, but it's in the grace and the love and the compassion of the faith that God wants to reveal. He's not going to just give you the glimpse of it so you can see it, but He wants you to enter into that what you see when you yield to the Holy Spirit, where the Christ comes alive inside you. What an awesome God. Hallelujah. That's the reason it says, what well, he gives you none of yourselves, and here's the, the thing, it is a gift of God. The very gift of God. It's like God's giving you a gift to be able to restore you, give you a gift that he can heal you, he gives you a gift that he can set you free, and gives you a gift that turns your soul into joy, and gives you a gift that you can forget those things that are behind, and enter into that thing that is before you. Do you understand what God is trying to say? He wants to give you grace. Not just to give you a, a good feeling of feeling, not feeling guilty about the, the evilness of your life, but He wants to give you grace enough to transform you and change you and translate you from darkness into the very light of God. So that that light that is in the light of God is going to come alive in you to the grace of God, which is a gift of God that you have a new life and the old things are passed away. Hallelujah, that gift sets you free from you from the humanity of carnality in the form of godliness that denies God's power, this grace has the power to, to raise you up into the glory of God. 
That's the reason when you get the gift of God, it clearly declares in verse 9, Ephesians 2, 9, not of works. No more works. No more you trying to do it. No more you trying to live it. No more you trying to somehow try to get there by your own self. I'm trying to be good, Lord. I'm trying to live right. I'm trying to keep my mind on the right track. I'm trying to stop thinking evil in my mind, but it's, it's almost like a battle that's taking place in our mind and our soul and our spirit that we need to surrender. Say, here, God, take me just the way I am and come alive inside of me. Incredible. Awesome. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. All we have to do is open our heart to the living God. All we have to say, here I am, God. I'm ready to go all the way with you. Hallelujah. I'm ready to surrender. I'm ready to yield to the grace of God. I'm ready to let God have his way in my life. And stop holding on to yourself and to your own understanding. Amen. And let me take charge. But he can't take charge unless you're willing to humble and you're willing to surrender. Unless you're willing to yield to God. It's when God is going to give you birth to that very life of God inside of you. Hallelujah. You see, it all comes to the grace of God. In 1 John 4, 7, it says, let, Beloved, let us love one another. You know, he's telling us to love one another, but you got to understand to love one another is not done by works. It's done by the grace of God. He puts a love inside you. He gives you a love that you don't have. Hello. The love that we weren't born with. A life that comes straight down from heaven. The love, hallelujah, that gives us the ability and the power to love one another. Like Christ did. Because you're going to find out sooner or later how far your love will go because it can only go so far. You're going to run into somebody who just can't stand it. Amen. You're going to find somebody that's, that's so wicked and evil that you will want to almost kill them. <laughs> but you see, the love that Jesus had was a compassion of love that was willing to lay down his life and die. And have mercy on the one of the criminals that was hanging on the on the right side of him and the, on the left side. And the only difference is the one on the right side decided to say, have mercy on me. While the, the one on the left side who was a criminal mocked him and put him down. I said, if you're really the son of God, come down and come down from that cross and, cross and save yourself. And the other thief on the cross said to the other thief, he said, hey, man, so we're guilty, we're deserving this, we're being judged and punished because of our wickedness and evil doing. Amen. You see, God did not cause them to escape the judgment that they were, they, they had sold for, that they had committed and done. But what God he gave mercy to the other man was that he saved them from going to hell. He saved them from being delivered from the wickedness of the life he was dying on the cross with, being judged and condemned to death, while Jesus, who never sinned, was condemned with the same judgment and condemnation that the two thieves were having and it's exactly the same thing. When we stand before God, we will be judged according to our sins before a living God. And we won't be no different than the two thieves on the cross, except we don't have to wait to get to the cross to die on the cross. So we can actually give our life to Jesus now and be healed by the grace of God 
that God is able to put that love inside of us like he put in Jesus. A greater love had no man than this, a man who laid down his life for his friends. You know, Jesus had a love and a compassion that when he gave himself for you and commended his love towards you, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. He did it to put that love to come inside you to change you. Let's not make it complicated. Let's not try to do it by our works. Let us stop trying to do it in the flesh. And let us come boldly to the throne of God and yield to the grace of God. Because he's the only one worthy enough to do it. And all the injustice and unrighteous things that you are suffering in this world. And you're carrying that burden upon you. That you are frustrated and upset. And say it's not right what, not, what, what, what the world has been treating us. And then you've got to come to God and say, God, even this has to be laid at the cross. So, so my heart can be set free. And the love can be formed into us that we can forgive them as if it never happened. But that doesn't stop the justice from being taking place. God is still going to have justice. Hello? God still has to judge the evil and wickedness of this world. And they're not getting away from it. And giving grace doesn't excuse them from it. They still have to pay the penalty for the consequences. Kind of reminds me of a, of a person who basically had accidentally killed her husband accidentally. Uh, hit him over the head with something and the, the husband died and of course she ran away and hid herself for years and got away and then she ended up getting saved and then she was going to church and serving God and one day they caught up to her and caught her and they finally found out who she was even though she had changed her name and everything else and therefore then he was brought before the judgment he was found guilty of the charges that was given to her and she went and stood in the judgment seat and he was telling the people before they were executing her, putting on the electric chair. He said, you have any last words to say? She said, yes. I just want you to know that I am being judged and punished and put to death because of the crime I have committed. But I have another testimony that Jesus has saved me and forgiven me. That even though I'm going to be punished and be judged and condemned to death, yet I will lift up my eyes and I'll be in heaven with Jesus because he has washed my sins away and I have already received forgiveness for the crimes I've committed. And therefore, when I die today, I rejoice and be glad because I'm going to be with my my father i'm going to be with jesus hallelujah and therefore don't cry for me but rather cry for your souls that you might be saved and maybe you haven't committed the crime i did but we have all come short of the glory of god and we all sin in different various ways but god has committed his love towards us and then she was executed. Praise the Lord. So I don't know why people worry about if you're going to die. People are going to abuse you and put you to death because you believe in Jesus. Only thing he can do is kill me, but he can't kill that relationship that I have with God. Amen. I have no fear in that aspect. So no wonder God's saying for us to love one another because it's going to take love that God has for the world, but it's going to take the love that God needs to put inside of us to be able to love the world, not to accept putting acceptance on the world and its wickedness and evilness, but show them the love and the power of Jesus Christ that's capable of healing, delivering, and set the captives free. Hallelujah. 
You see, for love is of God. You see, Jesus didn't come here to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. And coming through him to be saved means you must receive his love inside your heart so he can liberate your life and fill you with the freedom that's in the Holy Ghost. And everyone that is loved and is born of God and knoweth God, when you come into this relationship and you know that you're walking in his love, then you don't carry the memories of things you suffered wrong. You will no longer carry the, the abuse that you suffered by whatever means soever. You know, we may try to say, oh, well, you don't know how life has been bad and you know who done this and that. But you see, the thing is, what you're stuck in, you need to be delivered from. And only the love of God has the power to deliver you, but you have to realize that don't try to justify it. And don't be so quick to condemn those that have done you wrong because, because you still need to be healed from the suffering and the pain that you have lived in. And you cannot be free unless you have the compassion and the love to lay down your life like Jesus did. And as you lay down your life, life for them that you will be healed in yourself so that you will no longer be bound by the by those strongholds that's in your life. Bitterness, anger, and hatred, and offenses. I right, said, so you don't know how I got off this. Well, sure we do. We all been a victim of this. Some way, shape, or form, or another. But you gotta understand, people who did this had no idea that they were causing such devastation they did not understand that they were under the control of darkness. They didn't understand that they were driven by a wicked nature of the sinfulness in their lives. For whatever has crept into their minds, they've never been healed from it. And therefore, you're the victim that they chose to hit you with, which was inspired by Satan himself. See, the devil uses people to hurt you. Sometimes it's very close to you, but that's where you have to have a greater love and greater mercy to humble before God that you can allow God to lift you up into a higher position. Amen. Did you hear me? Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? Hallelujah. It says here, 1 John 4, 16, and we have known. When we enter the grace of God, when we enter into the relationship of the love of God, as God begins to wash and sanctify us and purify us, then we'll begin to know the reality of a manifestation of the love of God that has come into our hearts, that God is gonna bring a restoration and restore to us everything we have lost. Amen. You say, well, I started out on the road, but somehow I got detoured on the way there. Somehow, even though you've been going to church all these years, you still got off the track. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And just because you sit there, raise your hand and praise the Lord, you still have issues that you haven't laid down. But when you lay them down and love comes alive inside you and when you're free from the guilt, when you're free from condemning and judging others around you and the love comes alive inside of you that passes all understanding and we believe the love that God has for us that has made us free, which we have received in the grace of God, this is the love because God is that very love that God wants us to live in. Amen. God gives us grace to come into this love. Not to look at it, not to just to get forgiveness, but to actually abide in it. Because he has to wash your sins away first 
in order to give birth to that love that you come in submission to by the grace of God, which through faith you believe that he has the ability to change you, to do what you can't do, hallelujah. As a result, that he that dwelleth in love now, in other words, he that enters into this relationship of love begins to live in it, hallelujah, and you begin to dwell in that love, and when you do dwell in that love, all of a sudden, all the walls of divisions and hindrances and things that have stopped you from loving God is taken out of the way because you are entering and actually through this love, you're dwelling in the love that is in God. Because God is love, you're beginning to abide in it and you become in harmony and unity with the love of God that you can live in it continually. Oh, glory to God. And it says that he that dwelleth in the love dwelleth in God, and then God dwells in you. Oh, my God. What an incredible understanding of a manifestation that God is wanting to do with you and me, that he wants to raise us up this very hour, to raise us a glorious church. There is a change coming. Hallelujah. This is one of those things that is prayed, pro proclaimed by an apostle uh, this weekend. He said, there's a change coming, but the change is not the change that we're looking to the world for change. It's a change that's going to happen to the body of Christ. It's a change that's going to happen to your heart and mind that you're going to come into the liberty and the freedom of the life that raised Jesus from the dead that's going to resurrect you into the newness of this life living in the very love of God that passes all understanding, goes beyond the works of the law, goes into the fulfillment of the scripture that can only come alive to the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. 1 John 4, 18 says, There is no fear in love. When you enter this love, you're not afraid of people anymore. You're not afraid of those who hate God. You're not afraid of what people are going to say about you. You're not afraid if, if, if your neighbor doesn't like the fact that you're serving God. Even if he calls your name, you're not afraid. You're not intimidated. You're no longer bothered. We don't want to hear about God. You're not letting that bother you at all. Because you can't stop that love that's in you. That love has made you free from fear. Nobody can put fear into you. He says, if you don't stop preaching this, you stop serving God, we're going to put you in prison. He said, go ahead and make my day. I said, we're going to kill you. He said, you can't kill me. You may kill this body, but you can't kill the spirit that is in us. Hallelujah. That's why the early church was capable of giving their lives and dying on the cross and being were fed to the lions in the Colosseum of Rome. Hallelujah. Nothing would stop it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we have, he says that there is no fear in love because perfect love casts out fear. Understand, only time the love becomes perfect when you're living in it. But in order to be coming to it, you've got to lay down your fears. You've got to lay down your insecurities. You've got to lay down all the issues that are binding your mind. Because fear always has torment. When you're still tormenting, it's because you're not made free in love yet. You see, he that fear is not made perfect in love. But if we get into the perfect love of God, we're free. We're not trying to insult people by telling them to serve God. We say, we, we're telling people we love them to, that they can come into the love of God. We're not telling them they're good for nothing. We just tell you, you know, there's a better life. But he can't come into you unless you're willing. Hallelujah. You see, God's calling us into a last day revival. And we're going to get busy for God. We're going to be able to shine a light wherever we're at. 
you don't even have to say a word. Just stand in the midst of darkness, and the darkness knows that there's a light shining there. And it's the light is not you, it's Christ in you. They see the peace, they see the love, they see your actions and your reactions are not like the world. And the only reason you have that liberty is because you have surrendered to the grace of God. Amen. Amen. You're not worried about no matter what kind of restrictions they're trying to put on you because that doesn't stop us. We just say, okay, what, are, what do you want us to do now? You see, we have a commission and a call from God to go into all the world and preach the gospel. We got a whole city here that needs to come to Christ. We got people on the streets. We got people in, in their safely in their homes who need the same love that the man on the street needs. Amen. There are thousands of people that need to be healed and restored at this very hour because they're victim of what's happening for the last two years. And it's affected their hearts and minds. They have not been released in their minds. They're demanding justice. They're demanding righteousness. They're demanding to do things that's right. Because deep inside their hearts, they're wounded by the circumstances of life and the restrictions that we put upon them and say, we don't want this bondage no more. We don't want this control. And the only way that control and bondage can be taken out of your heart is when you yield to the love of God. When the love of God comes into your heart, nothing will irritate you, nothing will offend you, nothing will bother you. I don't care what you do, I'm free. Hallelujah. Your freedom comes by Christ coming in, and then when we stand for the truth, then we can say the reason we can speak up and say we're against the wickedness and evilness of this world is because the man can't help but be evil and wicked. But we're giving a solution to this wickedness is to get saved. Call upon the name of the Lord and let God heal your heart and mind and soul and then you'll really be free and then our nations will get free. Amen. Our nation will be set free. And people are all upset. You know, Antichrist is doing everything in his power and he's got his plan in motion and he's going to put everybody in bondage under control of the one world government. And people are panicking. All panicking. But don't you read the scripture, what the scripture said? That Jesus is coming? Haven't you heard what God said in his word? That when he comes in, He's going to destroy this evil wickedness in the Antichrist with the brightness of his coming. Do you understand what that really means? He says he's going to deliver people from the bondage that they're in because they're going to come to God. They're going to come to the love of God and they're going to be set from every form of bondage that's known to mankind. Sickness and diseases and injustice and whatever's been done. And when that love destroys that strongholds and bondages, that evilness will be destroyed and man shall be set free because now Christ is the only solution to this problem. I don't know why in the world people would put their faith in a governmental system that's going to save us. Because it's not going to save us. Oh, well, we're just going to get a new leader in our land, and that's going to change everything. Listen, their plan is in motion, and that plan is being permitted by God. It is God that allows the Antichrist and the beast to rule for three and a half years, and you can't change that. I don't care who gets up on there on, on a political standpoint view. It doesn't matter who's going to be the premier or prime minister of Canada or the president of the United States. It ain't going to change what, what the plan has been planned to be done in the nations of the world. Hello? Amen. See, we're living in a confusing world today. Everybody's blaming Russia trying to take over, over Ukraine. 
For in actuality, the Ukrainian army is bigger than the Russian army. You know what? The, the Ukrainian army is armed with 250,000 men. Well, the Russian army is only got 165,000. If they were really out to try to take over Ukraine, they would have done it already. Did you hear me? For your information, President Putin is trying to get, make peace to stop the war. But who's pushing them to have more war? Who's financing them? Who's giving them the weapons? Who's the one? United States is doing the one doing it, pushing them, let them fight the war. Did you hear me? Amen. They're saying they're fighting for their freedom. Are they really? Or are they just creating the third world war? A nuclear war? We gotta wake up and understand things ain't what they say it is. <coughs> says, how do I know that? I listened to a, a military man that's been in the Marine Corps for 31 years in the Army, and he's, uh, he's also a senator in the Senate. He actually talked about it, he explained it. What's really happening? Hello? We're talking about a wicked generation. Things we don't even see and things we don't even know. The things that's been done that's totally evil and wicked. You think that you're gonna destroy evilness by blasting a nuclear bomb? You may kill some people, that's about it, but you can't stop the sinfulness of man. They're also trying to make it legal and make it is in some places where you can abort a baby or even after it's born. They want to make it legal that after 25 days or 23 days that you can still abort the child that's born. That's going to extreme. That's man of lawlessness. That's wickedness to its maximum. <coughs> They're trying to Euthanasia give to the elderly so we can just kill them. So, so they don't even have a choice whether they want to be killed or not. That's, that's, that's how evil this world is. What we need is the Holy Ghost deal with disturbing sin killing revival. People are not going to get saved because they accept Jesus. They're going to repent of their sins. They're going to turn from their wickedness that's in their flesh and then be born into the grace of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 John 4, 6, and we have known and we believe the love that God has toward us because God is love. Amen. And if we dwell in that love, God dwells in us. And we in Him. See, grace of God is really the love of God. Grace of God is the gift from God so we can have a new life that we can live in. Not our life, but His. You know what our biggest problem is? It's not the grace of God, it's us. Because we're still hanging on to my opinions. We're hanging on to my ways. We're still hanging on to what I want to do. And, and I have freedom. I can do what I want. Sure, you have freedom. But you have just as much freedom to choose to enter into the gift of God, into the love of God, into the grace of God. You see, in God's love, all things become new. It's only in the love. God's love is so pure, it's holy. Amen? And that love is in the grace of God. That is inside your heart you enter into. His love is what causes you to believe all things are possible. And another thing about the love of God, God's love will never fail. You hear that? 
When you live in this love, it never fails. Doesn't matter what happens to you. See, that's where religion comes off backwards. They say the only way you can have the love that everything has to be perfectly in line, that you have no flaws. You, you, you got just a perfect marriage, you got a perfect home, you got a perfect children. Well, they're trying to tell you that if you survived, your marriage survived 60 years, you, you, you really got a, God's grace has been upon you. But it has got nothing to do with you endure 60 years because you can still be miserable after 60 years and still not be in the love of God. You just put up with it. Hello? But if you're living in the love of God, then 60 years won't be nothing. You see, the love that God gives and the grace of God, the love that is the condition of His love endures all things that never fails because that love keeps loving no matter what happens. You're going to keep loving your wife even if your wife don't love you. Amen. Did you hear me? You keep loving your children even if your children don't love you. Amen. Because the love is setting you free, but you can't love your children unless God puts a love inside you. And it can't come in until we say, Here, God, wash me, cleanse me, forgive me, and put our love in my heart. Did you hear me? Amen. Hallelujah. He said, Love is so pure, so it remains pure on all conditions. We think that it has to be a perfect condition. What about an unperfect condition? Are you still pure? Hello? Love that believeth all things and love that never fails is the love that endures forever. But you've got to be living in it. When all hell breaks loose, are you going to still love? Are you going to still stand with Jesus and praise the Lord in the midst of situation if they put you in a prison camp because you're preaching, believing in God? If they torture you, will you still praise God? Are you going to be like the apostles when they were put in prison hanging on the wall with chains after they've been whipped? They said, praise the Lord and begin to shout and thank God. Hallelujah. Will you be praising God then? Oh, man, I can praise God when I go to the church and the music is just fine and right. Can you praise God when things are upside down? Because it has to do with the condition of the heart. There is power in God's love, amen, that's making all things possible. You're not justified by how things look like. You're justified because you're walking in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. The great man of God that started Huntley Huntley Street, 100 Huntley Street, he passed away and And I saw him, I forget his name now, David Mays, that's the one. I don't know the person, haven't seen him. I don't watch the programs or nothing. I just saw him someplace over here in South Korea. He was visiting. And I walk up to him, and when I walk up to him, didn't know nothing about him. All of a sudden, when I walk up to him and looked at him, you know what happened to me? I literally fell inside me the love that this man has inside him. This man is full of love. I said, wow, I can't wait this in my spirit. I get there. Oh, there's love just searching out of this man. I don't know who he is. I don't know what, he, where, what he's doing and all that stuff. And I'm sure he must have gone through a lot of hell for that love to be formed inside of him. A lot of persecution and all kinds of misunderstanding. But there's one thing nobody could do is change the love that was inside of him. 
And I told his son while he was in a conference having a, a thing for marriage with his wife. And I went up to him and I told him after the service, I says, I said, your father walked in that love and he was living in that love. And I witnessed the love that was inside of him. The reason he was the way he is because God's love was inside of him. And that's the reason that love was in his marriage too. Because he was walking it. Do you understand? That's it. When you get the love of God inside of you, you're going to be fine. That love will give you the endurance. That love will give you the patience. That love will give you the joy. The love will give you the understanding and give you a love that believes it and hope in all things. And love that will endure through everything and love that will never fail because nobody can take the love out of you. Because that's what makes you free. And it's that what's going to drive and bring people to God. It's the love that has to be first. It's the love that is the grace of God. Need to come alive. We need to hunger for it. We need to thirst for it. We need to seek it with all our hearts. We need to open our hearts and humble before Him. Say, God, pour out Your love within me, so I can be free. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, the whole key is we become who we are to the grace of God. We become the workmanship that only God's creating in you through Christ Jesus into the works that is in Christ and not of yourself. And all you have to do is say, I want that. And if you say, I'm willing, I want it, guess what God's going to do? He's going to start releasing that grace and that love inside you, and He'll begin to sanctify you, purify you. He will bring you to the crevices of your heart and mind, says, okay, let this be washed, and that be washed, let this be healed, and let this be set free in you. Let all of this come alive in you and then the love will grow no matter where you are. Amen. Amen. So then he raised us up together as a result of Ephesians 2, 6 says, and we're sitting together in the love of God and the grace of God in heavenly places or spiritual places. That spiritual place which is in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. I guess we should end with this song, amen. Worship, amen. Worship, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know what's the difference between praising God and worshiping God? Praising comes from the outer court. You come into the outer court. I praise Him, praise Him. Praise Him in the morning. I will enter His gates with thanksgiving in my heart. That's just that again, the outer court. But when you go into real worship, you know where you go in? You're actually going into where the glory is. And when you come into the glory of God and into the love of God where it comes alive inside of you, you begin to worship God in spirit and truth and, and the, the holiness of God after He's washed you begins to fill you. 
And as he fills you, he transforms you. He raises you up in the spirit, hallelujah. And then you begin to yield to that love and to that power and authority that is in that love. And no weapon form against you will prosper. Enemy comes against you one way, will flee seven other ways. God begins to raise that anointing as we humble and yield to that glory inside. Life to the dead. Hold them, I sit on a deep hold them, 
Say God good. Well, I'm going to take up, yeah, take up the arm. Lionel's on the ball. You don't get blessed until you start giving. And as you give to God, you cannot give God. Even if you give that little bit that you have, God will honor it in the abundance. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's raise your offering to God. Let us thank Him this morning. Father, we just thank you for the gift of God that you have given to all of us. It's your love, the most precious, most incredible, awesome offering of your love you gave to us to your son when he gave himself to die on the cross as we offer our offering to you with our thanksgiving we also give ourselves into your hands that you will release your blessing upon us that in everything we put our hands to will begin to be blessed that no weapon form against us will prosper. Everything that the enemy is trying to stop to interfere, God's blessing is coming upon every one of us so we can rejoice and be glad and, and be filled with your glory. And we thank you, God, that you have your way today in Jesus' name. And we thank you, God. We thank you for fixing it for him. Thank you. Hallelujah. God give me the strength to play. <laughs> Glory to God. But I thank you anyway. You can just play the keyboard. Hallelujah. And say. Bless you people to stay. And those who are listening on YouTube. Let them come to God now. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless.